policy and regulation and stuff, but I am an expert on me, so I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> um, so I want to start off by telling you the story of a friend of mine. He, he's one of my favorite people, and he, a couple of months ago, a year ago, actually, he was kind of overweight and really unhappy with himself. And lucky for him, he has this crazy younger brother who's a bit fanatic about anything. Um, notably things he's really passionate about, so he kind of goes off and tries to get people to do those things. And so he told his brother that he should try this diet called the paleo diet because his little brother had drinking the Kool-Aid and was all about being paleo. And but you should actually drink Kool-Aid. No. <laughs> <laughs> he drank wow. like the red wine or the water or whatever, right? He ate meat. Um, and so anyways, his brother decided to try the diet and he ended up losing 30 pounds in three months, which is pretty good. And he's kept it off and he's super happy and running marathons and doing a lot of fun stuff. Um, so I thought that story was pretty awesome to start off with how awesome this diet is. I'm not trying to promote this diet, but if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to tell you about it in the end. Um, that I wanted to tell you that story because uh, it's actually my future brother-in-law. My fiance is a big part of this story I want to tell you, so I have to kind of include him. <laughs> so Bob, right there. <laughs> um, so, so basically, that's where I want to start. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself so you can understand where I'm going to go with the story. For starters, I am a crazy libertarian. I work at IHS, as my bio says, and he said. And um, so that is a step in another direction that I'm going to go. Um, I am also incredibly active. Bob and I do marathons. We rock climb. Um, I believe he's compared me to a winerunner, which is this really high energy dog that if you don't run it, it eats the walls. I don't eat the walls, but Bob can tell you when I haven't exercised because I'm not very nice. So um, that's very important. And so to feed this very active lifestyle I have, we, we basically adopted a diet that was conducive to our lifestyle. Uh, I was introduced to the paleo diet uh, two years ago by one of my coworkers. Um, and it sounded crazy at the time. He said, this diet means that you don't eat grains, you don't drink milk, and you don't eat legumes, which includes peanuts, by the way. Um, so I thought that was that was kind of insane because it went against all the conventional wisdom that I had heard about diets, right? Like you hear about the food pyramid, now my plate, you hear about the, what's it called, the RDAs, the recommended daily allowances. And it just seemed like, no, we should eat grains and pasta and whole wheat, right? We need our fiber. And uh, so I decided, you know what, like, let me look into it. So I got a bunch of books on this diet, and I started reading a bunch of blogs. And uh, we ended up adopting it. And ironically, Bob was a vegetarian at the time and totally signed up. He was like, yes, I want to eat bacon. <laughs> now it's a bunch of meat and bacon. It's pretty awesome. Um, so because of the success of his, of his brother, um, we decided to try to uh, tell his other family members who were obese and overweight about it. And they were really inspired by Bob's brother's story, named Scott. We'll just go with Scott, because that's his name. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so they, they wanted to do the diet, right? And we wanted to help them. We wanted to build a community around this. And we felt that a blog was the way to do this. So we started the Primal Challenge, primalchallenge.wordpress.org. Y'all are interested. Um, ironically, I don't blog in it as much as I should. Bob is upset about that. <laughs> um, but uh, we started it specifically for his uncles and his father so that they could go in and talk about their challenge. We decided we were going to challenge 30 days of eating this paleo slash primal diet. And if you want specifics on the two different diets, I'm more than happy to share them with you. Um, and they opted in and they, they decided to blog. And it was great because we, we, Bob would contribute a lot, I would contribute here and there. Scott was excellent. Like, he'd do his like, weekly links and stuff. And, um, and it was great. And we thought it would just be for our family, and it turned out that it wasn't. People saw this, our coworkers, our friends saw this, and additionally, other bloggers, paleo bloggers saw it. And so that really clued us in to this huge community of paleo bloggers out there that were very passionate about this kind of niche crazy diet. Ironically not so crazy because people have been doing the diet for about, oh, I don't know, 500,000 years, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, so, so that was just kind of like, wow, there is this huge community around this crazy diet. Now, if you go through and read a lot of these blogs, they are, you know, they give you advice like eat meat and sleep a lot and take a vitamin D supplement, go in the sun, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there are a lot of uh, libertarian rants on these blogs because a lot of this diet 
is contradictory to what the food pyramid says or what the RDA say, right? It's like we're the diet says eat a lot of eat a lot of meat, eat vegetables, which everyone wants you to do. Um, but the RDA is saying eat a lot of grains, whole grains, right? Eat wheat, and um, clearly in contradiction. So you see a lot of these rants, and there is definitely a like a, a skepticism towards the government from these readers, right, of the blogs. Um, I, I want to say it's almost like the, the tipping point of it. Um, you have these influencers, and they're just influencing thousands of people out there. In fact, I was so influenced that in, uh, I'm in a Coke Associate program, I don't know if anyone's familiar with it, but you're required to do a social entrepreneurship project. And I was so into this idea that I was like, we've got to do this. And so I found three other unfortunate souls to do it with. They're paleo too, and they love it. And clearly, we can't tell people to not eat grain because we don't want that. We want to promote economic freedom. And so we really went on to the <laughs> course of like, government regulation in the food. So we looked at subsidies, regulations, um, rent seeking, and all that. And um, these people are experts, so we'll talk more on that. I don't know any of that. Um, I could act like I do, but I do. Um, but one thing that we did was we, we ended up surveying about 100 to 150 people who claim to be paleo. And we found a very interesting trend. Whether people, people already said they were libertarian because we asked what their political affiliation was. But um, more notably, we asked how they felt about the FDA, um, subsidies, school lunches, um, and things like that. Now, some people couldn't speak on school lunches because they didn't have children, but most hated school lunches. Um, everyone hated the FDA and USDA. Um, and the, for me, the more interesting one was the subsidies because the question we asked was, do you feel like we should subsidize the paleo diet? And uh, so if you answered Democrat, most of the Democrats would be like, yes, yes. we should <laughs> encourage people to eat paleo, right? Tax grain and like give you a tax break for eating meat or something, <laughs> which is kind of silly. <laughs> um, but clearly all the libertarians and more economically free market-oriented people were like, no, subsidies are bad. And so that's kind of where I, I want to go. Because um, when I ended up presenting this at CAP, at Co the Coke Associate Program, and people were like, hold it. Well, what about vegetarians? What about vegans? What about people who like to eat donuts, right? Like, what about them? They clearly, they've done the research on the diet that they feel is right for them. So we get into our subjective value. And so I, I would argue that vegetarians and vegans, for the most part, have a lot of um, moral and ethical reasons for not eating meat. And that's clearly, it, it may be a health issue as well, a health choice, but a lot of times it's, they don't want to see animals be tortured for their consumption. Um, and then you have the people who like donuts, right? It's kind of like people who like cigarettes. They love the sensation they get while eating it. So their short-term gain outweighs their long-term what is it called? cost. There you go. <laughs> um, so, so basically, there's a subjective value on diets. And people who opt into like, the paleo diet or vegetarianism or veganism have done extensive research on this, and the government contradicts most of these diets. And so it's, it's silly for them to, to tell you to eat, to recommend a certain diet that most people rely on because the government is a source of information that is there and apparent. And they shouldn't be because it's, it's not fair to people who are contradicting. Not only that, there's like subsidies and all these other things that go into prices and choices that people make. But the bottom line is, is that we want to make sure that people have, have the individual choice they can make for their personal lives, and this goes beyond diet, and that they can um, and have the options to buy it. And we're fortunate enough to live in a country where the information is there. It's not blocked from us. You can find it. You can Google it. You can you know, figure out whatever blog you want to read for the day. And also, the food is there. You, you can go to any supermarket and... And it, you know, as Peter was saying earlier, you go into supermarkets in foreign countries, and it's just vastly different from American supermarkets. But in American supermarkets, you have thousands upon thousands of options. And if you want to eat paleo, you can eat paleo, and it's not hard to do. And if you want to eat donuts, they're there too. So, bottom line is, like, people should be left up to their own decisions to decide what they want to eat. Next, let's hear from you.